Butler, you're joining the Pro Bowlers Tournament. This is a $75,000 Watching here is in the sixth frame, and he is 62 pins behind Earl Anthony, his opponent. Going along at five strikes in a row, and he missed on the six. This is just the first game. Of course, it'll culminate with the final game. The leader is Dave Davis, and you'll see that live and in color from San Jose, bowling for $10,000, first prize money in the $75,000 Ebonite Open. I'm Bud Palmer, along with our good expert here, Billy Whalo. John Petragula is coming alive, but he still trails Earl Anthony by 52 pins. He was open in the fourth, John Petragula, and that really cost him. But our viewers just joining us, in fact, 75% of the country uh, just joining us, uh, we'll see all five left-handers on today's telecast. you'll see you're watching Earl Anthony and John Petraglia and then the winner of this plays Ski Foremsky. The winner of that match plays Larry Lickstein who's in second place and then the final game will be against Dave Davis for the first prize money of $10,000. In fact now not just the top five in fact all 16 in yesterday's match game play were left-handed. We of ABC would like you to know that in case you, for some reason, have been locked in the closet and haven't read your papers. This has been the greatest coverage of any bowling tournament in history simply because 16 left-handers made the match play finals. That's a phenomenon, bud. Sure is. Now we're in the eighth. This is Earl Anthony once again, who's from Tacoma, Washington. Six feet, 185 pounder. It's won one tournament, the Seattle Open in 1970. It was in four finals last year. Now we'll continue with the $75,000 Ebonite Open with the action live and in color on the Professional Bowlers Tour. This is the eighth frame, John Petraglia up, and he trails Earl Anthony by 48 pins. We still have, these are all southpaws, and the winner of this game will play Ski Bramski, and then to Larry Lickstein, and finally to Dave Davis for the $10,000 first prize money. But this is no uh, uh, first time thing. This is uh, not known as a left-handed house, but they have done well here. Billy Allen won here. Uh, Dave Davis is the defending champion. Ski Ferenski was in the finals last year, but off of this year, a uh, showboat in Las Vegas uh, used to be the left-handed house of the tour, but now Saratoga's taken that title away from them. You might hear some rumbling in the background. That's Ski Ferenski practicing for the next game. And Billy, uh, the uh, top, top 16 fellows place this week. Well, we're going to let it go and roll it for you. Uh, 16th was Wayne Sheridan. There you see it as it goes. The money is beautiful. Ebonite saw to that. Don Helling, Dick Batista, Ross Packard. Uh, we told you earlier all players are left-handed, so I don't have to talk about Tile here. Tom Long, Jim Chesney. This young man is only in his second PBA term and bowls here regularly in league. Dan Bedoin, Ed Dolfe, of course, also from Houston, Butch Gerhardt, Don Glover. And the alternate today is Mike McGrath, the two-time PBA national champion. And you're looking at the winner of the first game now, Earl Anthony. He's closed out Johnny Petraglia. So Johnny for fifth place. Hello, Earl. We'll take off $3,000. And we'll go from there to $10,000 in first prize money. And uh, February 13th at King Louis West in Kansas City, it's the $70,000 Andy Granite ISTP Classic coming up. Just one of the big tournaments. They're all getting bigger and bigger here on the Professional Bowlers Tour. And February 27th, we have the $70,000 Miller High Life Open. In between Bud, we jump down to Winston-Salem, North Carolina for the Bowling Classic. Well, Earl's got a 260-something game going here. Man, that's a good start, isn't it? All right, if he strikes on this ball, he'll have 265. And 
that's what it is. 2.65, the winner, Earl Anthony. Johnny Petragula closing out now. You know, another sport's coming up here in the summer of 72. Sounds like a long way away from today, but not for thousands of young American athletes, guys and gals who are now working and training to realize a lifetime dream, and that's membership of our 1972 Olympic team. And you can be part of this Nash endeavor and help send our top athletes to the 72 Summer Olympics in Munich. Here's how. Send your $5 contribution. That's $5 to Olympic House, Box VA, 57 Park Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. In return, you'll receive a colorful Olympic embroidered cloth emblem for your jacket or cap. So why don't you be proud? Be part of America's Olympic effort. ABC Sports will be in Munich for the Summer Games. Televise all the color and pageantry of this exciting spectacle. We sincerely hope you'll be able to lend your support to these great athletes. So there's the end of the first game. Johnny Petragula, 205. Earl Anthony is the winner. So Earl moves a step closer to the first prize of $10,000 as he faces Ski Peremski from Houston, Texas in the next game. And we'll see the start of that action in just one moment. Oh. First, you can see Johnny Petragula in losing the first game still picked up $3,000. And now the fourth place money is $3,500. And here's Earl Anthony who bowled very strongly in that first game with a 265. His opponent is the dapper Ski Foremski from Houston, Texas. But this young man made a great charge uh, in the semifinal qualifying round uh, to move into position and then bowled a pressure round, his final qualifying round, to make it. He came from way off the pace. Once he got adjusted there for speed and angle, then he just never left the pocket. Ooh, that's twice, Johnny protracted it. How can a guy that good do that? Well, Bud, uh, he's playing that wide hook off the left and just just didn't adjust his body turning wise into the pin. He's trusting that hook. They're used to it hooking so much, and it just didn't go hook all the way across that lane. Oh, my. Well, here's Ski Foremski, his opponent. That's a big opening for Ski. Ski, by the way, was the runner up here last year to Dave Davis. Powerful ball. Uh, we're going to watch the three pin go to the right and around the 610. That's called the fast eight in the bowler's terminology. Solid pocket hit and still only get eight. Well, Ski jumps into a 11 pin advantage right off the bat here. That open frame for Earl Anthony. By the way, Ski has won five championships. He won Las Vegas twice, Lubbock, Wichita, and Montreal. As I mentioned, was a runner up here last year to Dave Davis. 1970, won $32,398. gets it back <laughs> pretty even again, doesn't it? He was much slower on that ball, but he's trying to uh, get a speed balance here to keep the ball from breaking too sharp. And let's watch as it does break too sharp. There you see it going almost through the heart and the uh, 6-7-10. That's going to be the big key today, and I'm sure Dave Davis will be really using some speed. Well, that split was a big break for Earl Anthony, who, after being open in the first frame, now is four pins on top as he goes to the second. He does have a fine style in the very fact that he does it the same way every time. The strong point of his game is that he crouches very low at the point of release. Right there, you see the deep knee bend. The angle from the back down the leg is 180 degrees, so he can get the good follow-through and the good reach from that low position. 
Very smooth, isn't he? Now, here we are watching what Billy said live. Oh, so smooth. But as we watched live, perhaps you caught a little turn of his body that time. His foot was more to his right, and in doing so, caused his arm to be more to his left, and he couldn't pull the shot back. There you see it staying way out to his left. Now, this time, you're going to see him in motion, and right at the point of release, watch this foot. Now, it's going to come all the way around behind his back. And we're back live once again. Wanted to show you the mistake he made as he gets the spare. And now, Ski Foremski steps up, trailing by four in the third. Perhaps our viewers will remember Bill Lillard, the former National Open champion from many years ago. He had the highest kick of any bowler. He uses a lot of body English out there, too, doesn't he? We, uh, we call him uh, one of the great gyrators. He's moving all the time. He's very piston-like in his footwork, too, but uh, he's very by the book in that he takes them straight in line, but he's very rapid, and that's what he constantly has to avoid, is going too fast. Too fast, yeah. See him hopping around in front of our shot there. Let's take a look at his footwork now. There's Billy. this piston-like footwork, especially the second and third step. But he gets very, very good timing this time. He's working awfully hard. Now, right here is where the feet go. Da -da. You see how yeah, quick you can they see come the down? Yeah, right. absolutely. And that puts Earl Anthony six pins behind right now. And more of the second match coming up on the Professional Bowlers Tour. The gentleman you're looking at right now is Dave W. Stapleton, chairman of the board and chief executive author, treasurer of SW Industries, which is Ebonite. And just to his right is Earl Eric, who is vice president and general manager. Really enjoying their $75,000 Ebonite Open as we go to Earl Anthony. Trailing by six pins. Going into the fifth, we got a lot of other big tournaments coming up, like the $85,000 Cougar Open from Madison Square Garden, New York City, March 13th. It all culminates with a $100,000 Firestone Tournament of Champions from Akron, Ohio, Riviera Lanes. That's April 3rd. Of course, in between, we go to Washington for the Fair Lanes Open. <laughs> Slow seven just goes over there. Yes, uh, that's again the speed control, and it just got it the last two shots. Here's Ski in the fifth, trailing by four pins. We have talked about Ski and his footwork and his problem with rushing. He talked about it, too, and here's what he had to say. Uh, my biggest problem is uh, rushing the foul line, so uh, in about the last two months I've been concentrating on just shuffling my feet. But the big problem I run into with slow footwork is uh, babying the ball a little bit, uh, so I really have to concentrate on throwing it out. Now, Ski is going into the sixth, trailing by five pins. And we now pause five seconds to allow local stations to identify themselves. And we're back here once again. Bud Palmer along with Billy Waylu. This is Ski Fremsky in the sixth, trailing by five. This is the Ebonite $75,000 open, live and in color. And he gets them all. Now, Earl Anthony, leading by five pins going into the sixth, but that ain't no commanding lead, is it, Wade? Not with Ski for Remsky, but he's one of the great chargers, and if he's got a chance on the sheet, uh, he'll give it a good run. A little split screen for you. Whoa! 
Anthony getting some great breaks that uh, he was denied last year. Earl has the tendency to be a little too careful, bud, at the key time. And uh, he didn't trip any fours last year. There's the first already. Hey, there's Don Carter just to the right there, and it's pretty wide. And Mom Carter, too. Mm -hmm. And there's Mike McGrath sitting there, the alternate. Joe Richards. Split screen for you once again. Sorry, Earl, the 10 is still there. Now, that's a very disheartening thing to the bowler. Uh, he got the great break. But let's watch in slow motion the pin action. Powerful hit, and you see that three pin just taking off wildly to the right. Watch it go up and around. Mm. Back, miss the complete 10. That's a toughie. Dave Davis bowled 299 here and uh, had a powerful hit like that on his final ball. Oh, he did it again. That's twice Earl has done that. Left an open frame. He left it in the first frame. Left the six in the first frame. And now, Ski Fremsky only trails Earl Anthony by two pins. And we'll be back with Allen's of the second match in just a moment. yourself into that world where everything unpleasant gets shut out. You deserve a beer great enough to linger over. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Once again with Billy Waylu, a big one in the seventh here for Ski Faremski, who trails by two pins. We're going to split the screen, let you show the ball, and watch the antics of Mr. Faremski. It's a big shot of the match here, bud, for Ski. He didn't like it at all, because he just stood on the line. You could tell that if he had a chance, he would have been hopping around like a hot pea in a pod there. Oh, or something like that. Uh, at the point of release, uh, he was there too quick. That's that footwork problem. He's trying to get the speed, but uh, when you get too fast, you lose the ball on the downswing, which he did, and made it hook very early. A pea in a pod? You don't know home cooking. You're on the road so much. I can't you don't wait know till what you, I mean. I can't wait till you get down to Texas. We put a little more sayings on you down there. John Meredith and I swing that hash around pretty good. Words of the food you're talking about. Corn pone, ham hocks, lima beans. You guys all talk awful big. Here's Ski in the eighth. I had longer reach there, bud. Yeah, he knew it. Here comes Earl with a biggie in the eighth. He leads by two. That'd be some combination. You and Meredith. Wow. The airways couldn't stand you both at the same time. This is a big shot because he missed that spare. You're wondering what happens to his concentration. Let's watch. Good recovery, bud. Oh, again on the 10. But a good recovery as far as shot making. Uh, two in a row solid tens. We'll look at it. Powerball again. And right here, watch the pin go out to the right. Mm -hmm. Hit the wall, go right back in front of it. That's the power in the shot causing the plastic pin to fly. Now he's missed this in the seventh, the 10 pin. Missed the spare. He made that one. This is a real tight match. 
And Earl's going into the ninth now, leading by two in the first game. He bowled 265 to defeat Johnny Petraglia, who had 205, and Johnny picks up $3,000 for fifth place. Continuing along in the terminology of the poker player, those last two shots for Earl are a tough pair to draw to, but... Oh. I tell you, you and Don. Mm. But he did it again real good. And almost left the third. And that sort of puts the ski a bit as he's stepping up here in the ninth. He was the runner-up here last year to the defending champion, champion Dave Davis, who is waiting in the wings. He'll bowl the final match, whoever gets through this real tough elimination. by eight. This has been tight all the way. I told all the boys in the locker room, bud, with the left-handers here today to pray for me. Now they're praying for themselves. <laughs> he knows that that was the big shot. Of course, when he didn't get in the seventh, he came back in the ninth on the same lane. Now, he's played well on the left-hand lane, so uh, if he can strike out here, he'll close out Earl Anthony. He almost went over the bench there, and now he leads by 18. And this is the 11th tournament here at Saratoga Lanes in San Jose, the second oldest on the Professional Bowlers Tour, the oldest being the Showboat Invitational in Las Vegas. Now, this is the unquestionably biggest ball of the match because if he makes a strike here, Earl Anthony's going to lose sitting on the bench. Did he know it, but I don't know. That 180 confused me, he did. And he's the winner, Ski Paremski, defeating Earl Anthony here in the second game. And now he'll go up against Larry Lickstein. But we'll bowl this one out. He's got a 220-something game. Larry is stepping over. Now, he has to stay behind the foul line again. If he doesn't, he doesn't get any count. He's behind it. And later today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, live for Central Time, five Pacific Time, the World Two-Man Bobsled Championship from Trevenia, Italy, North American Figure Skating Championship from Petersburg, Ontario, featuring U.S. champions John Mishapetkovich and Janet Lynn, along with the Canadian Open champion Karen Magnuson, along with the International Alpine Skiing Championship from Kitzbühel, Austria, all on Wide World of Sports. And then following that, Live via satellite will be the Hawaiian Open from Honolulu, the third round. That's later here on ABC. But right now, uh, Earl is just finishing out his 10th frame. Uh, Earl going for a 190 game. He'll pick up $3,500. Paremski is the winner right behind him there it, with the third on is Larry Lickstein with a bravado mustache and these two will be facing each other in the next game. So it'll be Ski Fremsky moving up to meet Larry Lickstein in the third round here of the $75,000 Everett Open. Live and in color you're watching the professional bowlers tour. <laughs> More pros roll. And it's live and in color. King hands is Ski Faremski there playing against Larry Lickstein in our third match. Here's the way it went. Earl Anthony defeated John Petragi in the first game, so John has $3,000. Then Earl Anthony faced Ski Faremski. He lost that one, but he picked up $3,500. Now we're in our third game. It's Ski Faremski and Larry Lickstein. <laughs> Best lane of the two, bud. In, in 
In fact, all five players chose to start on the right lane so that they could finish on the left lane. Here's young Larry Lickstein from Windsor Locks, Connecticut. We might aptly call him, because of his crooked arm delivery, the left-handed Don Carter. Sure, Watch as he like takes him. it back. Right. Larry's looking for his first win. This is uh, in the Professional Bowlers Tour. This is his first time on national television. His best has been third in 69 of the national championship at Garden City. He's going to have much the same problem with Johnny Petraglia. He has an excessive amount of hook. Watch it as the ball is going to break way too sharply here to the right from his left and cut right through the heart. He gets a good break here and not leaving the split. He sure did. That's a different type of miss there. That's uh, due to the excessive amount of hook, and that's what we call the chop. The ball's going to go right through and pick off the front pin, the two pin, and uh, leave the four. That's the chop. The ball just broke too sharply. Yeah, but Earl missed a couple, too. Well, that's because he wasn't turned enough in facing the pin. You get so used to playing that pocket angle that uh, you don't shoot too many spares. And there is Larry Lickstein looking very unhappy. You might have noticed Don Carter right behind him. Here's Ski in the second, and by 12. Oh, that'll leave. <laughs> oh. In the bowler's terminology, we're going to watch the leave called the Greek Church. When I say go through the heart, look at that. Right through the one, two, three, and it breaks so sharply, he doesn't get the break. You see the pins lay in the channel. They don't come back out to break up the split. That ball was just wildly breaking at the pocket. a tremendous break for Larry Lickstein as Ski Fremsky you can see his disgust with that one goes behind by two pins. Ski's going to have to make a calculated risk on the right lane. He's going to have to throw hard and take his chances there on getting tapped like Earl Anthony did rather than leave those bad splits because the ball's just breaking too sharp. Young Larry Lickstein, tall, thin fella. He's 5'11", 145 pounds. 69, he won $20,000. And 68, he only won $100 on the tour. Leading by two. Well, here's his form, the southpaw Don Carter. Right. Uh, the crooked arm is the unusual part of his delivery. There you see the arm is bent. The ball is tucked in. It's almost like a broken pigeon wing. And he never has a full extension. Right here, powerful forearm and powerful shoulder swing. Now leads Ski for Emski by 12 pins. We'll be back here at the $75,000 Ebonite Open in just one moment. There, just recovering from knee surgery, is Don Carter. On his left is his beautiful wife, Pat. On the right is his mother. Don't forget the Don Carter Classic, another one of the big stops on the professional bowlers. Tour. That comes up just prior to Akron's Tournament of Champions on April 3rd. Of course, the winner here qualifies for the Firestone Tournament of Champions. Well, that's right, bud. Uh, uh, Eddie uh, Elias, I'm sure, is watching today, and I hope Scotty Brubaker is there with him because that's the Firestone Tournament of Champions, and uh, we want y'all to ride on them Firestone tires, folks. And now, Ski Fremsky moves into the fifth trailing young Larry Lickstein by 12 pins. Boy, this tour has really grown, hasn't it? Before really it has. Over $2 million in prize Just amazing. Position, it started 13 uh, years ago. There's practically nothing. Ski in the fifth. Well, 
but for those, again, who have watched the moonwalk and maybe taken a stroll and just joining us, uh, we told our audience earlier that the not only five finalists here today, but the 16 match play finalists yesterday were all left-handed. Uh, the right side played a little tricky for the boys this week in comparison to the left side, and the left-handers just ran away with this tournament. a good one to run away with, $75,000. You tell them. I'd like to call back about 20 years, bud, and be out on this tour again because it's wonderful to have a tour planned for you. All you have to do is send an entry in, not, you know, hunt for the tournaments to go try to win a check. They're there for you. Just get to the next stop and be able to walk around. That's true of all sports, though, really, right now. Six. Larry, leading by 22. Yeah. He was praying on that one. Yes, he was, and he's increased that speed, bud, so he could be a real problem here for Ski Foremsky. Yeah, there's more money. Look, when I played pro ball, and I made a big salary for the next little over $10,000, and that wouldn't pay for Bill Bradley's account. Yes. And speaking of the basketball, don't forget, tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, NBA basketball here on ABC. It's Chicago Bulls against the Boston Celtics. And then at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the American Sportsman, followed by the final round of the Hawaiian Open, live via satellite. And Ski in the sixth, trailing by 21. But he increased it. In fact, he left the solid seven in the fourth frame or he would have a four backer. That cuts that lead to 11 right now. The finest thing that I'd like to say about the cast, our five finalists today, is that not only did they do well on a predominantly left-handed condition, they have done well in many tournaments across the country. And in fact, today, these five players have 20 PBA championships among them. Not bad. I didn't believe he would do that, uh, Bud, but uh, he was just, again, after the speed on the right lane, he didn't want to go too fast, and so, therefore, he cut his speed a little too much, and he got the sharp break through the heart again, almost what we call the Greek church, the big five, just barely kicks out the seven, and that's, it's beautiful if he can make it. He's got to just barely, barely touch that four pin, which is, he went no. holy. And the action will continue here in San Jose, California, right after this message. And there's your score, Ski Foremsky right now, trailing Larry Lickstein by 33 pins. Ski was open in the second and open in the seventh. And Larry was open in the second. Here's Larry, who's not showing much nervousness, I don't think, for his first time on national television. Uh, we asked uh, uh, Larry Lickstein about the trouble with his hook, and here's what he had to say. Well, uh, earlier in the week during the practice session, I was hooking the ball quite a bit using a fingertip grip, so uh, I went to one of the uh, pros out here on the tour, Don Helling, and I had him drill me a conventional ball, which I had used in the past, but I didn't bring any along with me this winter. Back the second game of the tournament, I shot 148 with my fingertip and went right to the conventional and shot back-to-back -back 250s with it, so I've been using it ever since. I can understand why. <laughs> well, Bud, the technical reason why, from the wider span or the fingertip down to the conventional, the shorter span, he can't get as much leverage in his grip, therefore he won't get as much lift on the ball. He's in the eighth now, leading by 32 pins. still standing. At this point, uh, where he left the solid 10, here he has a little less lift on the ball, so it doesn't, you see it deflect mm -hmm. to the left there, and he doesn't get the kick at all to carry the seven. Just caress that, didn't knock it over. Oh, there he goes again. That's twice, that's that hook it does it, isn't it? He can't bring it in, and that changes the whole complexion here. That's twice he's done that. He did it in the second frame, and now once again here in the eighth. 
he had it just about clinched, and now it's still a game. Now at the point of release right there, you can see plays close to the edge in the first place, but that time, too straight, no lift. He just uh, doesn't get it back enough. Well, that was what he, and here's where he missed it. Too close to the gutter. Now Ski Fremsky in the eighth. Davis, who's the finalist coming up here for the $10,000 first prize, just scooted over to take a look at the condition of the lanes. They can actually change doing a match an hour and a half, can't they, quite a bit? Oh, well, certainly, Bud. Uh, uh, they change because of the climate, the atmospheric conditions, how much oil or how little oil, how much polish. All of that affects the surface, you see. On a golf course, you can see the water, but here every uh, lane is uh, the same length and width, and th therefore the variables in the bowling game are not visible. But the condition does change. The boards are different. A dark board, the ball will slide. A light board, the ball will hook. And all that influences the angle that the bowler plays and his speed control. Ski in the ninth. 20 behind. Here's the screen for him. Oh! Oh, he's been living right with that one, huh, Billy? Well, he's got that great roll on the ball. Uh, that's the first time that any of the players have hit light, that light today to mix them. And, of course, they're all going to get the kind of strike because they've all got that ball really twisting and grinding. 16 in the ninth. We could have a tie game. If he spares and strikes, it's 194. If Ski Fremsky makes three strikes, it's 194. We'd have a uh, two frame roll off. Sudden death. He's going for lockup. That closed him out. That does it. Larry Lickstein is our winner. Man, he's going just fine. As I mentioned, his first time on television. Now he's shaking his head there. You can see some of the tension sort of come off him. He's only 21 years old. And he'll place Dave Davis, the defending champion. In the finals, and first prize will be 10,000 bucks. Be the first time uh, Dave Davis, of course, going for back-to-back -back victories. He was the winner here last year. No one ever has successfully defended at the Saratoga Lanes. And it's going to be 2-0-something for Larry. 2 3 He's our winner over Ski Foremski. Ski just finishing out here. And uh, just hang on with us because coming up at 5-4 Central Time, Wide World of Sports, a three-part show, the World Two-Man Bobsled Championship, the North American Figure Skating Championship, and the International Alpine Ski Championship from Pittsfield, Austria. And then also at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the third round of the Hawaiian Open, live via satellite from Honolulu. And of course, tomorrow we'll show you the final round over there. And Arnold Palmer is right up there, you know. And it's he trails, yeah, he trails Tom Shaw, right, right, by one blow. Maybe Arnold can win this person who didn't win any in 1970. And there's Dave Davis sitting beside Larry Lickstein. He'll be the opponents in the final match here. Ski's going to have a 190-something here. $5,000 Ebonite Open is almost history as Larry Lickstein gets set to meet Dave Davis from Miami, Florida. And at stake, the championship and $10,000 first place prize me. And we'll be back in just a moment. See what I'm wearing. And we'll be back with the final match here between Dave Davis and Larry Lickstein and uh, $10,000 first place prize money. And uh, once again, uh, got two southpaws. Southpaws all over the place today. Well, it's not a first, bud. We had it at Wichita last year. That's when right. We worked together in the Wichita Open. This is the second time in our telecasts that we've had all five lefties. <laughs> but a bowling first when we had all 16 in the match play finals. And they just did so well from that left-handed side. 
Well, I also did the uh, Wichita, too. Maybe these left-handers ought to pay me a percentage. Might be. We'll be back live and in color in just a moment on the Professional Bowlers Tour. Here we go, shaking hands, Larry Lickstein and Dave Davis. First prize, $10,000. Ski Fremsky, who was beaten by Larry Lickstein, picked up $4,000. And to the loser here goes $6,000. And here's a man, his first time on national television in the finals here. And once again, I might say the crowd here at the Saratoga Lanes in San Jose, look at them in the background, over a thousand people here. They were lined up this morning at eight o'clock to get in. They turned away more people than are in here. And the same thing was true yesterday. Just so the tremendous popularity of bowling here in not only San Jose, but all over the country. Really. Certainly true, Bud, and uh, to proof of that is when we're in New York at Madison Square Garden. Here we're going to see in slow motion the ball's going to hook too sharply and just miss the five. In Madison Square Garden, we're going to do the telecast in the Felt Forum, the final rounds of the Cougar Open, which will seat 5,000, so that'll be a great day for bowling. Dave Davis, the defending champion here. <laughs> swing of his, that positive action he has going to the line. Oh, he's probably uh, one of the most by-the-book bowlers left or right in the history of the game. He's very, very well coordinated, his feet in a straight line, good timing, the full pendulum swing from the shoulder. Uh, we'll show you this great form as soon as we get a chance. Davis won 12 titles. Big year was 67 when he won six. Dave here won the Firestone Tournament of Champions in 1968 and also the national championship. Billy mentioned earlier, you might have missed it, but he had a 299 game here in the opening round of the tournament. He missed the six pin on a final shot. But uh, you take pleasure in life, certain things. I'm very proud to say about this young man. I signed his application when he joined the Professional Bowlers Association. I'm really pleased. Did he uh, stick a little bit? He seems to be working on the approach a little. Yes, uh, caused an abrupt uh, release there, and he thought he might miss that pin, so he's double-checking that approach. Well, Larry's already under pressure with that open in the first frame. He trails by 11 here in the second. Boy, that thing really came in. <laughs> he really twirls it, bud. Uh, he's... We can watch it. Uh, it's a, just a real wide-breaking hook at this point. If it doesn't break back strongly, he'd leave the weak 10. But you see, it doesn't deflect to the left. It goes on through, and he gets the full power. Boy, that will mix. Boom, boom, boom. Thanks for those pins. named Earl Johnson that threw the big hook, and they called him Twirly Bird. Uh, he's the left-handed Twirly champion. Okay, here's the defending champion, won here last year. Has five perfect games. Anyway, leads by one, as you can see. He really concentrates on the line. You have to be quiet, because him light, slightest noise can distract Dave at the line. <laughs> mentioned earlier, you're going to see speed, and here's where he gets it, in his farm. Pushes it away, everything by the book. Full extension, right at that point, the pendulum arm swing, feet are forward, arm is back, full extension, right at shoulder level. He comes into this leverage position, and look at that knee bend. Now watch that follow through. Look at that. Beautiful extension. He's in the fourth, leading by one pin. Oh, he looks tough. And so now, Dave Davis increases his score, and we'll be back for the final match between Dave and Larry Lickstein in just a moment. 
last season's leading money winners, Dave Davis, with 39,460, but didn't play in as many tournaments as the other fellows, you can see, because uh, he doesn't go much on the summer tour as the other guys do, I understand. Yes, he's uh, living in Miami now and enjoying that sun. Seven is Larry. That was in the fourth who trails Dave Davis by 12 pins now. Notice Dave in the background never looks at his opponent. See him? He just keeps his head down, never looks at what his opponent is doing. The crowd was all praying, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because uh, they missed one earlier. In fact, uh, two in the previous match. Now Larry's in the fifth, trailing by 12. You can see a decided contrast in speed between their two balls. Great contrast between two left-handers here, isn't it? Okay, Larry, right here. Yeah. Well, uh, Bud, a point there that you now brought up. Uh, Larry Lickstein would never be able to throw as hard as Dave Davis because he doesn't have the full pendulum swing. Whatever speed he gets is somewhat of a force speed. With Dave, he's got that full extension, and he could throw it over the masking unit on the fly, somewhat like Dick Hoover, you know, had the oh. power and the speed. He used to bullet down there. And he picks up the spare. But Dave here goes ahead by 13. By the way, our thanks to the Professional Bowlers Association's Executive Director, Eddie Elias, and Saratoga Lanes for their cooperation on today's telecast, which has just been great, fellas. The prize money is furnished by the PBA and, of course, Saratoga Lanes. But earlier in the week, uh, Dave had a few problems adjusting to the condition here, and we asked him what he did to solve it. Here's what he had to say. The, the only thing I've changed this week over the, the past few weeks that I haven't been really knocking the pins over is I've switched to a lighter ball. This week I'm using a 14-pound, 2-ounce ball. The pins uh, here at Saratoga Lanes are a little lighter, and I need a lighter ball for the deflection. Okay, let's see if he can... Pick up this seven pin here in the fifth frame, leading by 12. Some people began to wonder. Dave wasn't in doubt because he knew he had lifted it well. When you get it out on the edge, make sure you got plenty lift. Boy, you could hear the breeze go by, the intake of breath around here, thinking that wasn't going to come back. So many people ask us, Bud, in traveling around the country, what do we mean by lift? Well, we often comment, we'd like to do it again. When the ball comes off your hand, the thumb comes out first, and the ball comes off the fingers second. It's when it comes off those fingers that you give it a pull, and that's what we call lift. I pull, by that I mean an upward pull. Don't pull to the left or right, pull straight up. He's left the seven now, in the fifth and the sixth and the second. He's left the seven then. Bud might be a good point right now to that little old lady in Killeen, Texas, who wrote me that letter of the ball coming off the thumb last. In one of our earlier telecasts, I said one of the bowlers was hanging the ball on his thumb too long, and she thought I meant it came out of the ball last. So, uh, Killeen, Texas, I hope you're listening. <laughs> Okay, it's Larry now, in the sixth, looking for his first tournament victory on the professional bowlers tour. His first time on national television, here he is in the finals against Dave Davis, doing beautifully. Boy, that's showing you, that's showing you a lot of guts. That's a twirly in there, huh? That's it, bud, you picked it up just right, way out to the left edge, twirled it all the way back. And look at Dave in the background, not looking. Watch where he steps. See him? Just look, he just looks down, doesn't want to know what's going on. There you see him. Right behind him is Pat Carter and Don. They're really watching. Good match here. Now we got us, bud. Yes, sir. And now Dave Davis only leads by one then. And we'll be back with more of the final match between Dave Davis and Larry Lickstein in just one moment. Here's fire.
Okay, here we go. Back at the $75,000 Ebonite Open. And the big crowd here of over 1,000 is completely hushed. We have a very tight match. Dave Davis here in the seventh, leading Larry Lickstein by only one pin. First prize money is $10,000. And see how easily Dave gets distracted. Somebody just coughed, and it really pulled him off the line. He, you might say nothing gets him. has rabbit ears when he's on the line there. Well, but everything is so quiet. It. That's right. And any slight noise uh, will break your concentration. his uh, speed and his arm swing, especially under a trying condition. He can overcome that sharp break, but... Well, when you get under pressure like this, good style really helps, doesn't it? Oh, especially over a long period of time. Consistency, that's the uh, number one mark in anything you do, and it will prove out. You might wonder who that other fellow is sitting there. That's Mike McGrath, who is the alternate. Yes, and the alternate yesterday for the 16 was the great right hope, to paraphrase uh, title. Bo Burton... You can see by his expression now his big grin on Dave Davis. He considered himself mighty fortunate with that strike in the eighth. And now he leads Larry Lickstein by 11. There he is, not looking what's going on. And here's Larry. Pressure goes back on Larry with a strike here. He'll cut the lead again to one. You see, he said something to himself. And all right, come on, Larry, something. psych himself up here. This match is uh, tighter than the band on Byron Nelson's hat, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, we'll be there. Fine open later today and the final round tomorrow. Live via satellite. And now he can take the lead, bud. What do you think? What do you think? The pressure is on the defending champion, Dave Davis. In the ninth, he trails by nine, and he knows it. He, Boy, Larry's shown me a lot here. There's a lot of class, especially for a young man in his first time on network television. Going for his first win. And he can take a cue from Dave Davis here. Watch Dave pacing himself beautifully, letting the noise from the crowd die down. They are excited, too. Very much so. There's Larry. He looked up now. goes ahead by one pin. He's got a three-bagger. Larry's working on a four-bagger. And Larry had an open frame in the first. Ooh, man. And don't forget, if we get a tie, two extra frames to decide who gets that $10,000 first prize and who gets the second prize of $6,000. That's right. And we sure do hope, bud, that Louis Delano, who is the executive sports editor of the San Jose Mercury News, who has done a great job in covering this tournament, I mention him because it's the first time we've been here 11 years that their executive sports editor has come here for the telecast. We're very happy. This is the 10th for Dave Davis. Match is all even, bud. Now, Dave spoke earlier, bud, about the light ball. And with that speed, he didn't get the full carry. He left three of those light sevens. That's one in the second. You're right in the fifth and the sixth and now the tenth. Now, when Dave won the national championship, he hit his ankle on this shot, which he needed to win. I'm sure he's thinking about that. Let's watch. He breathes a sigh of relief, bud. It stays in your mind when you do something like that in the clutch. You always come back to think about it. Well, now he's got a 220. Something coming up. Right, bud. If he strikes on this ball, he'll have a 227. Seven, yeah. And there's Larry, trying to fight off the pressure. So 
all even. He really wanted that one, bud, because that forces Larry Lechstein to strike. If Larry doesn't strike, he loses. Man, you couldn't get a more exciting finish here. Typical of the kind of action you see on the Professional Bowlers Tour. We've got a lot of other great tournaments coming up next week. It's the $70,000 Andy Granatelli STP Classic. But here it goes. Larry Lickstein needs a strike, and Dave won't even watch. tells me a lot about this kid. 145. He doesn't care now, but that care. first one was the one. He Look weighs, at the relief. He weighs 145 pounds, and I'll almost venture to guess that that ball weighed 145 pounds on that first strike. Be a great, be a great clutch strike by Larry Lickstein to beat Dave Davis, and we'll go now to Bud Palmer with the presentations. Bud, thank you very much, and here we are, Larry Lickstein with his tremendous trophy. Dave Staplin, of Chairman of the Board of Evanites, presenting it. Did you want the trophy first? Do you want the check for ten thousand dollars first, Larry? Well, uh, <laughs> my wife knows. I better give her the check and keep the trophy. Okay, here's the check for your wife. Thank you very much, bud. And uh, you know what? Nice guy. Really great hand. Here he deserves it. I mean, really good. Just great. Larry, tell me, you, you really showed me a heap out there for a 21-year-old, your first national television appearance. Did that bug you at all? No, bud. Uh, earlier in the week, I uh, came out here and practiced, and I hit him pretty good. And uh, I've been very confident with the help of a few personal friends back home. Mr. Henry Caven has helped me out tremendously. And uh, one of the Why things you I help think Dave with that trophy too. We'll He's going to fall down with that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I think that have helped me tremendously is uh, keeping good habits and eating good. I used to uh, be kind of wild and uh, not eat three squares a day and whatnot, you know. And uh, it caught up with me. A lot of times in the morning, I'd get out there and I couldn't even see the uh, the marks on the lane. I was so tired. You know. <laughs> You know, he's like a Dave Stable for a 21-year-old. He's talking about us old fellas. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it does. Wasn't like it great, though? It really was. That wonderful, Larry. And Ebonite's delighted. Thank you. Delighted. Very, but very happy. I'd like to thank Ebonite uh, for this sponsoring this great tournament. They uh, put one in for us every year, and I know all the boys look forward to shooting it. I'd like to thank Mr. Frank Thatcher and his fine staff, and also the scorekeepers who... Uh, we belong.